We begin with the rapidly worsening crisis in Ukraine, where Russia is in the middle of an unprovoked invasion. Missiles and rockets rain down on Ukraine's capital for a second straight day. And the Kremlin claims Russia has taken control of the airport. Now, this video shows what appears to be heavy damage inflicted by Russian military shelling of an apartment building in Kyiv. And this fireball over the capital city is believed to be either a Ukrainian or Russian aircraft falling to the ground. Officials say at least 130 Ukrainians have been killed while trying to defend against Russian attacks. There are concerns about a potential nuclear incident now that Russian forces have taken the defunct Chernobyl nuclear plant, the site of the world's worst nuclear accident some 35 years ago. Meanwhile, thousands of Ukrainians fleeing the country have started arriving in neighboring nations like Poland and Romania. And in Russia, over 1,700 anti-war protesters were arrested for opposing the invasion into Ukraine. Russian authorities warn mass riots will result in severe punishment. We have team coverage. Christina Ruffini is in Poland. Nancy Cordes is at the White House. But first, CBS News foreign correspondent Holly Williams joins us from Ukraine, just over the border from Russia. So, Holly, Ukrainian officials accuse Russia of targeting civilians, something that Moscow denies. Can you give us uh, any insight on that claim? Right. Well, so Russia does deny that it's targeting civilians. And certainly when the invasion began at around 5 a.m. local time yesterday, although I have to tell you that seems about a week ago, uh, we've certainly barely slept along with many Ukrainians. When the invasion first began with those missile strikes and airstrikes, they were targeting for the most part uh, military installations. Now that Russian ground forces are engaged inside Ukraine, they're fighting the Ukrainian military. That said, those civilians have been killed civilians have been injured uh, and people have lost their homes. There's particularly devastating video from the town of Chuhiv, uh, which is up in northeastern Ukraine, uh, an apartment complex that was bombed, Ukraine says, by the Russians. Uh, and the Ukrainians say that a teenage boy was killed there. Now that Russian forces are moving into the outskirts of Kiev, or at least there's fighting in the outskirts of Kiev, if that turns into kind of uh, bloody street to street fighting, we would expect the civilian death toll to rise. Um, and in fact, before the invasion began, U.S. officials said that they expected uh, an invasion would lead to, you know, around 100,000 uh, civilian casualties. So chilling and gut wrenching to hear the loss of a child in particular. Holly, you're in a region which has been in conflict for years. Tell us about that fighting and how it's changed since Russia's most recent invasion. Mm -hmm. So I've been covering Ukraine since 2014, um, and a big part of that has been uh, frontline coverage from eastern Ukraine, uh, where the Ukrainian military has been fighting a nearly eight-year-long war against Russian-backed separatists. But that's quite a limited conflict. Uh, the front line is fairly static. The separatists are fighting with, for the most part, light arms and, and artillery. They certainly don't have guided missiles. They don't have tanks, uh, or not many tanks. They don't have fighter jets. Now the Ukrainian military and the Ukrainian people are facing the full force of the Russian military. And they do have fighter jets. They do have tanks. And they do uh, have guided missiles. Um, it, it, it is a full-scale invasion. And the Ukrainians are massively outgunned and outmanned. The Ukrainian military has about a quarter of the manpower of Russia uh, and a fraction of the hardware. That said, many people are very, including people here in Ukraine, are very surprised about the amount of resistance that the Ukrainians are putting up. Holly, to you and our teams and crews and colleagues across Ukraine, be safe and, and thank you.